All right. We are on a little mushroom mission this afternoon. And uh, we're gonna just roll up into a couple spots and uh, see if we can find anything. Should be good, we, we had a little bit of rain since the last time I was here and it's been probably probably a week so pretty excited a little optimistic and uh, hopefully we can get enough for a little meal tomorrow yeah <laughs> gotta love springtime baby Well, <laughs> this uh, was pretty disappointing. I kind of call this my uh, my early spot. It's it's very open, and a lot of it's south facing, so it gets a lot of sun early. And I picked it once already, and I didn't get a ton. Yeah, normally I can come back now and do pretty good in here. But like I said, I'm pretty disappointed. I've only got, I think, four, four decent ones in here. Um, we, like I said, we got a little bit of rain. Not a lot, but a little bit of rain. And it's been warm. Um, it's been ridiculously dry. So that's what I'm gonna attribute to all this too, is just, it's just too dry. There's not enough moisture in the ground. The temperatures are good, everything's good. Um, so that's where I'm at with my early spot. If it rains, it's supposed to rain uh, start this evening rain all night and all day tomorrow and if we get that much rain and then it's supposed to really warm up It'll be really curious to see if more of these mushrooms pop up here in this early spot or if they're just done I'm a little bit worried about my later spot, which where we're gonna hike to now um, It's it's in the timber. It's more shaded Typically it retains more moisture um, I'm optimistic about it, but I don't know this this kind of worried me. So we're gonna we're gonna get going over there and, and just see what we got. Got a couple of really nice ones here. This one's bent over pretty good, starting to wilt down, but yeah, these are nice. These are nice ones. These are really good ones. And what you're looking at here, these are two dead elms, okay? And something you really wanna think about with the dead elms are the ones with the most bark on them, like if the bark's all falling off them, they're stripped clean, um, those I find the least mushrooms on. A lot of the times I don't find any. The fresher the dead elm, if that makes sense, the more I typically find on them. And uh, just like this little one here, don't be afraid these little ones to look for them. I mean, even if it's one, two, or three mushrooms, that's that's great. But dead elms are always my number one. I would say probably my number two are probably apple trees. And again, dead apple trees, but they're a lot harder to find. And when you do find them, they seem to be more sporadic around them and not quite as clustered and tight around uh, um, as they are around elms, which they can be farther away from elms too, especially on slopes. But we've got a storm coming in, some rain, and I'm gonna keep picking and keep looking. There should be, I'm hoping, a couple more up here, and then we're gonna go look at another couple spots. And then uh, hopefully we can get enough for a meal, but these are, <laughs> these are beauties. Uh -huh.
So, something I'll talk about here for a second. And I've said it before, but I really like the plastic buckets. Old ice cream buckets seem to work the best. They're not as clunky as a five gallon bucket, but those work too with a lid. I like lids because if you trip and fall, which God knows I do, you don't spill them. And the reason, there's several reasons why I like the um, plastic little buckets. Because you can set them down and use it as a visual marker and they kind of stick up a little higher so when you get in this vegetation you can see them. So when I find mushrooms a lot, like I'll put the bucket by them and then I'll go, I'll go and I'll just keep scanning the area and kind of radius it, radius it and keep going in a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger circles. And you'll find a lot more mushrooms and like when you find one, like I don't pick it right away. Like I just stare at it. Give yourself, I call it mushroom eyes. Let your eyes, um, you know, take on the shape and uh, the texture and all those different things so you can really look at them. And, and also when you see one, just start scanning the immediate area just with your eyes without moving. Obviously watch where you're stepping, but once you just kind of start scanning, all of a sudden you'll see one, two, and then another one. A lot of, sometimes there is just one, but a lot of the times, and I would probably say the majority of the time, when you find one, there's, a, there's another one somewhere, somewhere nearby. So just something to think about. Take your time, go slow, and really look at your surroundings. And uh, I like, again, like I said, I like to use the bucket. It really protects the, the mushrooms too. And another thing the bucket does, or I should say doesn't do, is it doesn't snag up. When you're walking through this stuff, man, it's, you know, uh, um, prickly ash and multiflora rose, all the viney, thorny crap. Like, it, it'll tear your bags all up. And the mesh bags, a lot of people don't like hearing it, but it's just an old wives' tale as far as it leaving spores around and coming back and there's more mushrooms. That's, that's just hooey but anyways plastic bucket keep your eyes on the prize and take your time we're gonna keep picking yeah all right i want to show you something here this is a great great example of why you check everything so you can see here behind me there and there just two two little dead elms that's it you check everything and granted i understand it's only one but it's a beauty here look at this Look at this guy. Can you see him there? That's a beauty. You know, and again, like I said, I mean, look, I could have two, three, four, five of them around it. Um, but this time it's just this one. I kind of scanned around a little bit, but I wanted to show you just that little dead elm and that little dead elm right there has got this great big one on it. And that is a beauty. That right there. Is it beautiful? Beautiful morale right there. That's gonna be delicious. And something else too, as far as cutting them off, again, a lot of people aren't gonna like this, but when you, if you pull them out of the ground and the dirt and everything comes off, you know, a lot of guys will say, well, you're, they're not gonna grow there anymore. Again, it's all wives' tales. All this information is available. Do a bunch of research. And I typically pinch them off. Uh, a lot of people cut them. But the main reason for that is so you're not getting dirt all over your all over the top of the mushroom and all over your other mushrooms because then they're gritty and they're tough to wash off. So the main reason for pinching them uh, and leaving that that very bottom of the the trunk or stem in the ground is just so you're not getting uh, you're not getting dirt all over your hull. So we're gonna keep going. Couple more beauties.
Couple more beauties. <laughs> that was awesome. It was, a, it was a good haul. Uh, something, something real quick here. You know, when you go to spots and you don't find nothing and I know sometimes you check and you check and you go to all these spots, you feel like you're looking for Bigfoot. But, but I'll tell you, these mushrooms are out there. They do exist. Um, no matter how bad, sometimes it feels like they don't, they're out there. Just keep checking spots. Um, and really think about too, the type of spots. You know, you can, you can have spots that are, like I said earlier, the spot we checked first, you know, it's really open, it's really south facing, it's, it's early and they dry up and they're done quick. And then you can also have like your uh, north facing stuff that's in the timber that really takes warm temps and, and it's late in the season. I mean, you know, the very end of May, you can find mushrooms on that north facing stuff. Um, but just keep, just keep, uh, keep looking. They're there. Check your spots and, and it's not a one and done thing. Like I'll, I'll pick a spot all year. I mean, you can go in there and pick mushrooms and don't pick it once and go, okay, that spot's toast. You can keep picking there. Go there and you know, like where we, where, where we just were, we're supposed to get a whole bunch of rain for overnight and all day tomorrow. And then we're supposed to get some real warm mid seventies, even pushing 80 weather. And I'll bet you there'll be a bunch more in there. So I don't know, I got a whole ice cream bucket. Oh, ice cream bucket full. That's plenty for a couple people for a, for an awesome meal. But just keep keep at it and stay positive and it's out there. Just be be consistent and be persistent. You'll find a lot more mushrooms being <laughs> adopting that mindset. So good uh, good luck foraging and uh, keep at it. We're gonna go home and clean these babies up and get them soaking. <laughs> all right so we're here back at the house and we've got a, a nice little haul here a nice little pile and uh, I just wanted to just tell you how I take care of them so all I do is I take them I'll take the mushroom and then if there's still a lot of stem I'll clip the stem off just because it's easier to keep the dirt off it and then I cut them right in half and then I rinse them under cool water and I really clean them good. And then I put them in a bowl of uh, any Tupperware thing with salt water. And then I just soak them and push them down, make sure they're down in there. And um, that's about it. I mean, you can let them soak in the, in the salt water solution for an hour, overnight, whatever, until you eat them. It just really helps clean them, gets all the bugs out of them, because it can be, I mean, full of bugs this time of year, especially as the season progresses. You're gonna have a lot of bugs up in there. Um, there's lots of little nooks and crannies for them to hide, so it really cleans them up well. And then, uh, as far as you know, cooking them, I I personally like cutting them up into pieces, and then just sauteing them in butter, a little garlic salt, little or garlic powder, garlic salt, whatever, salt and pepper. And then I like to eat them with meat. I like to eat them with red meat. They complement red meat really well. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's that's all I do with them. They're absolutely delicious the spring delicacy. I hope everybody has uh, a successful uh, foraging spring and uh, we'll see you on the next vid. And again, like my Facebook page, Minnesota Outdoor Journal, and please subscribe to my channel. Mm-hmm. <laughs>